Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Noor. Um, welcome today for my presentation on um, AI in fashion size and fit. Uh, I will start by introducing the problem space and the opportunity behind it. Uh, we'll be visiting um, some of the AI specific challenges that we have. And then I will talk about the data, uh, the key to AI systems. And finally, I will summarize the main algorithms that we have running in production to serve our customers. Uh, before we dig into details, let me share with you a high level overview of Zalando. Uh, Zalando is a leader e-commerce fashion platform in Europe. Uh, we have around 450 million visits per month and over three, uh, 38 million active customers and many different brands and around 700,000 articles on the shop. So maybe ask yourself from the title, uh, why size and fit? Well, I'm sure uh, you're all familiar with the situation like this one you see in the photo. You order something online or even you try it out in the store and it doesn't fit you simply. Um, in online context, because uh, this is uh, the, the fitting process is delayed, uh, it's even more challenging. So um, almost half of the items that get uh, purchased online are returned. And this is, of course, coming from different reasons. Um, they can be about the material of the article or the quality. But uh, one third of these returns, uh, they are stemming from size and fit dissatisfaction. So uh, you can imagine addressing this problem creates huge customer and business and also environmental opportunities. So have you ever wondered why it's so complicated? Why getting the right size is uh, too complex? Uh, well, uh, it's not as easy as one might think because it's not one single number as you see on the label. To answer this, I will show you um, some of the main uh, challenges in this problem space. Uh, in the old times, garments were made by people themselves uh, or by the local tailor in your neighborhood. But nowadays with the mass production, uh, factories that are manufacturing fashion are very far from end customers and they also use outdated population uh, sizing statistics uh, some of these statistics are even collected on non-representative data samples and to make this is the worse there are no uh, uniform sizing conventions the so size systems can vary by country and by brand and uh, also these brands, they don't disclose the exact measurements they use in their designs. Then comes vanity sizing. Uh, so this is the concept of brands having target customers in mind, so target types of customers, and they try to control who wears these items by tweaking the sizing scales. So the exact same size t-shirt might come in different sizes from two different brands and they will have different labels. On top of that, this problem is multidimensional. So it includes many dimensions. For example, like the trousers you see here, um, they're described with the waist uh, size, the length, and maybe the fit and the shape. And all these aspects can be treated in the same way. With this, I reach to our team mission. Um, we would like to ensure customers getting the right size and fit from the first time. We are a multidisciplinary team with wide skill set. Uh, today, I'm going to focus about the applied science work, uh, how we develop AI systems. And uh, before going there, uh, I'm going to show you some of the spe uh, data specific challenges that we have to deal with in the applied science. So on the article side, as I mentioned, there are different size systems and also across categories, they are very different and brands and countries. Uh, we also have cold start articles that are newly added to the platform with no sales and returns. 
this is very challenging to give any uh, prediction of these items. Um, there is also high uh, ambiguity level in the article data that we get. So, for example, the fit I showed you in the previous uh, slides with things can be described with very similar terms. Um, for a tight jeans, uh, it can be called small or skinny or tight. There is high ambiguity. And uh, of course, the feedback that we receive on the articles can be delayed uh, due to multiple reasons. So the return process itself and also customers, uh, when they decide to, to return, we usually leave around three weeks to allow returns to reach our systems. And from the customer side, we have multiple customer behind one account sometimes, like one household using all the same uh, account. So you, you can differentiate if the orders are for um, maybe the sister or the brother, uh, so different people behind the same account. Also, we have cold start problem uh, with customers. Uh, so not only articles that are new to the platform, but also customers who just joined. Uh, they have usually no history or very scarce uh, order history. As well as the challenges with respect to different behavior patterns across customer groups. So some customer groups are more willing to share their feedback. Uh, some are not uh, very willing or open about sharing the size feedback. And some, they take the size advice very seriously. Some, they don't. It's a very sensitive and personal topic to talk about uh, the, the body size. And finally, uh, the high expectations from the customer side, especially when they provide us with feedback data, they have really high expectation on our advices. And because this is a very personal topic, they also expect some explanations. So since uh, data is the foundation of our work, let's have a look on the data sources that we utilize in our team. I'm going to start with the article data. So first, um, the, the purchased articles and their selected sizes. This is usually very sparse uh, on category level for customers. And on the right hand uh, side, you can see the return reasons. Uh, this we also uh, use uh, heavily in the team. Uh, return reasons due to size can be too big or too small. And um, for this, uh, data type, the returns, beside being delayed, uh, it's also subjective and very noisy. So it really depends on how people perceive uh, the size topic. Uh, we also use article visual data, so mainly the images that you see on the platform from various types, like pack shot without the human uh, passion model in the image, uh, the one you see on the left, and other shots that have the human model. We also collect size and fit feedback on garments and shoes from in-house fashion experts. They try uh, garments and shoes on and give us detailed feedback. We're also working with fashion experts uh, and together we've established unified taxonomy that can describe garments, fit and shape types. And now moving on to the customer data. We offer on the platform a sized uh, fit uh, profile space uh, where customers can communicate and see transparently um, how we use their data. So uh, this helps us increase their trust and they can share with us more how uh, items fit and if they bought them for someone else. Uh, in Zalon, Zalon is uh, Zalando's uh, specialized on online fashion styling service. Uh, it's a place where customers are paired with professional uh, fashion stylists, uh, and then they can get boxes of uh, uh, curated items for them. Um, in this platform, um, we ask customers to provide detailed uh, size data about uh, what they wear usually throughout a questionnaire. And recently acquired a startup called Vision. Um, they have uh, an app that does body scanning 
And with this app, we can start collecting body measurements from images. Now, uh, let's move on to, um, sorry, this was a, there was a delay. Yes, now let's move on to the algorithms in production. This is the most interesting part uh, of this presentation. So we have two main use cases or types of size advice that we provide uh, on Zalando. One that is uh, article uh, centric size uh, advice and the second is customer centric size advice. For the article size advice, um, we show customers uh, a small hint like the one you see here in the box that this item might run bigger, smaller, or the same size as the, the usual. This kind of advice is based on what we know about articles behavior from the return data. We also leverage the rich information in article images in student teacher transfer learning approach. This approach we have called SizeNet. I'm gonna walk you through this algorithm. So the first part is the teacher part. Um, it's a simple statistical model based on binomial likelihood, uh, which estimate if the article will have a size issue or not, considering the category return rate of the article. Along with this uh, weak table that we get from this uh, likelihood, we also produce a score that in indicates how uh, confident the prediction was. Then comes the student part, which doesn't have access to all this uh, sales and return data. It just can uh, look at the uh, image of the article. It's basically a deep convolutional neural network. Uh, it's trained with article images as input and the weak teacher labels as the output. During the training of this network, we use the teacher confidence to weight the contribution of each sample in student training. So we don't use too much data from, uh, or we don't have too much contribution from low confidence uh, articles. This model, along with the feedback that we acquire from human fitting experts, make up a strong and smart prior to judge article sizing behavior. Even with zero or few purchases, we can already give some predictions about the article if it's going to have size issue or not. And this effectively uh, addresses the cold start problem on a very large scale. As for the customer centric advice, we show like what you see here in the box. Uh, a personalized recommendation of a specific size that we think uh, the customer should buy. Behind this, we have multiple algorithms in place. So the first part is based on the purchase history of the customer. The baseline that we have running in all countries is very strong and it learns the size distribution of the customer based on their purchases and returns, along with the article size distribution based on all the article purchases and returns from co customers combined. This algorithm uh, takes as input uh, the customer purchase history and the query article uh, brand and category. Um, the other part, the deep learning recommenders that we have, they use as input the customer purchase history as well as uh, the query article features. So here we have the flexibility to add other features like the material and the color and um, the, the article specific categories uh, on multiple levels. Now for cold start customers that have no or few purchases, we use customers in the loop. Specifically for uh, Zalon customers, 
We use gradient boosted trees that use the questionnaire attributes I mentioned before from the loan platform and the brand of the query article. We train with this algorithm with salon customers that have already some purchases. And at this time, we can use only the attributes that we get from the questionnaire and predict already the size. What you see on the right hand side is the performance of this algorithm and, and against how many uh, uh, prior orders the customer have. So in terms of accuracy, the baseline, the one that you see in orange, uh, it's clearly uh, doesn't work so well for uh, cold start customers that have no purchases. And uh, the cold start, which is based on the questionnaire, uh, works much better. It takes the, the baseline around 15 to 20 uh, purchases, prior purchases, to catch up with the cold start. Um, now comes uh, a recommendation algorithm about uh, that makes use of this type of data that I kind of skipped when the connection was lagging. Um, this is called the reference item. So this box, we allow the customers who just joined the, the platform to tell us about their best fitting item. So they can provide us a size and the brand of best fitting item in their wardrobe. And use this um, also in a, a customer in the loop uh, recommendation algorithm for customers that have no Zalone questionnaire. And they just provide us with this uh, onboarding reference item. Um, we take the, the article that they provide and what we know about the brand to tweak or set uh, uh, an estimate of the customer size distribution. Now mixing the, the purchase uh, data and also the, the customer data together, we have uh, developed this meta-learning approach. Uh, it's a deep learning uh, model that considers each customer as a separate task. It takes uh, the customer support articles and their corresponding sizes and learns two mappings fx and fy as you see in the plot uh, that map them to the feature space and this feature space uh, the the points will exhibit a strong linear relationship and what we learn is this uh, Im embedded linear regression the the red line now for a query article uh, so a new article we embed uh, this article to the, to the size uh, embed, embedding space and the result from the linear regression is then mapped back to probability distribution over sizes using GY module. This model helps a lot uh, learning uh, sizes across categories which is not uh, possible with the baseline so giving customer that have chopped only jeans uh, or only lower body garments, we can, with the deep learning, already start uh, giving appropriate recommendation for upper part body garments. And this is the deep learning approach. It can easily ingest other customer and article data. So uh, we have, uh, uh, improve this approach, adding the, the customer body data I mentioned from Zalon, from the questionnaire, by including it in this model. So what you see here in the plot, uh, the original, the blue line, is the meta-learning approach without any customer data, is outperformed by adding some in, in, in the green line, some of the customer data, and all the customer data in the orange line. And you can see here also, it takes around 15 purchases to uh, capture up with the performance from using customer body data. So that was it from me today. I'm happy to take your questions.